Welcome back, guys. Tonight we go over a debate that there is no fucking right answer to. Uh, tonight we're going to go over SX branded Yee style chips, or Yee produced chips, and Evolve chips, especially the Evolve DNA 40. We'll not be going over comparisons with the Evolve DNA 200 because I think those are just a little too off uh, to compare each other to. Um, but, so, I will be using the IPV D2, which is an SX chip, I believe it's the 120-something, it's basically an SX Mini, uh, minus the Eco Mode and a few other minor little things, but, uh, I'll be using my, uh, the Vare box, uh, DNA 40, um, beautiful box, great device too with the IPV, I really, really like this device, I would do a review on it, but there's so many of them, I mean, come on guys, for under 75 bucks, you're not going to get a better deal on something that comes with a sleeve, this compact, that works this well. They both work exceptionally well. I mean, some days, I actually favor this one. Most days, I'd say 8 out of 10 days, um, I'd prefer the DNA 40. I'm one of the few, I know a lot of people are now moving over to the SX fanboys, all that stuff. Um, they both work great, okay? so. In my opinion, the real benefit of this guy is going to be with Canthal, okay? I know some people say this one works better with titanium uh, than the DNA 40, but I personally disagree. I think the DNA 40 works better for temp control in all way, shapes, and forms. Um, that's just me. I think this one works better with Canthal, so it just kind of depends which one you're going to go after. Um, I've got these guys set up at similar power settings, both running identical coils, with one with nickel here, one with nickel here. Um, I'm using plasma tanks in both, and I do have two different juices, just for redundancy's sake. I don't want to be baked into the same flavors. Uh, but we'll kind of take a pull and take it up, check it out. Alright, immediately I notice a difference between these two, and I'm running these in temp control, so I'm almost always running these in temp control. I can't even remember the last time I put a Canthal build in here, so this, this review will mostly be on the, or debate will mostly be on the, uh, the temp control inside these devices. Um, this one's already the winner for straight Canthal. It's got 75 watts. That just wins hands down. This one's only got 40 watts total. Um, this uses a Joule system, which I'm sure everyone here is familiar with. Uh, this one just uses watts and temperature. To me, I prefer the Evolve board because it does not have pulse width modulation. This guy has pulse width modulation when in temp control mode, so it kind of gets the rattlesnake noise that you could probably hear it. Not sure if you can hear it. But they pulse differently, they fire differently. I mean, don't get me wrong, the, uh, the uh, chip fires great with temp control with the uh, Yihi board. Um, I just happen to like the way this one vapes better. I don't like the pulsing, so that's the main reason I favor this one. I get a more smooth, consistent vape with the uh, DNA 40 versus the Yihi. Um, it seems like I'm kind of becoming the rarity. I mean, more and more people are preferring this board right here or this, this company's temp control. And I think it's awesome that we now have options and stuff like that. To most vapors, they're not even going to notice the damn rattlesnake or the, the pulse width modulation. Um, this one still hits hard and it still will prevent dry hit. But I just don't get the warmth and consistency that I get with this one. This one kind of reminds me, in a way, of Canthal. I hate to say it, with Canthal to me, um, when you put a pick up an atomizer that's been sitting at rest for a few minutes, I always notice one thing. The first couple hits are decent, and then after I've got the coil warmed up and the Canthal's really going, it starts tasting warmer and warmer and more flavorful, and I really like that. To me, I get that instantly and consistently with the Evolve board. With the EE board, I don't have quite the warm-up of Canthal, but I definitely have a one or two pull, uh, kind of like primer period where I'm getting the coil warmed up. So I just feel like this one for my needs and uh, my usage, because I'm mostly using single coil uh, drippers or tanks. I mean, it's either lately it's been a plasma or it's been a nectar. So uh, 
you know, I'm mostly a single coil guy. To me, the DNA 40 is just not enough to push to temp control coils. You pretty much have to do a single coil with this, in my opinion, to get it going the way I like it. I do like a warm, pretty hard hitting vape. I mean, I'm not, you know, choking down huge clouds with a with a plasma tank or anything, but I like to like it to give me a little kick and a little little punch in the throat. You know, it's part of the reason why I like the K Fun because it's got such a good throat hit. Um, but to me, this just feels like a higher quality vape. I know a lot of you guys out there in the, the Devere Mod group are dying for some SX chip devices. I think you guys will really like them if you're trying to run dual coils. Like if you got a Velocity or a Hobo and you want to run duels in that, I think it's going to be really, really good for that. But uh, to me, the winner is definitely the DNA 40. And a lot of people, they, they don't really see why I like it until I sit there and show them side by side the difference. And it's kind of like once I make them aware of it and they kind of go back and forth, they can kind of actually grasp what I'm saying and, and feel it too. And, and I've had a couple of friends say, oh man, you're right. You're right, the DNA 40 vapes so much better. Um, and I think with, with titanium and nickel wire, the way to go for single coil is definitely DNA. Now, the, this guy, it has 60 joules out of the box. You know, the Vapor Shark, Vapor Flask, uh, that's still DNA 40, but the SX Flask has the new 100 watt chip for Mihi, which is basically a custom uh, SX350J board, but it goes up to 100 watts instead of 75 because it's wired in parallel, um, but it only has 70 joules, I believe, or 75, something like that. This guy has 60, and it's only one battery. Um, 60 joules, to me, is definitely enough to push dual coils. Um, this one is just too weak. It's just, by the time you've actually wrapped enough wraps, to get the resistance where you need it to be on this guy, you've got dual 10 wrap coils on both sides of the deck. That's a lot of metal to heat up, and I feel like it still vapes, but it doesn't vape as good. It's not popping, it's not instant. So really, if you're if you're buying a Devere mod and you're getting the DNA 40, you guys, you really need to, to check out, uh, try and find single coil atomizers. I mean, in my opinion, buying a DNA 40 device, you're buying it for the temp control. I mean, there's a lot of other options out there nowadays, like the Yeehe products, that give you more wattage so you can use thicker gauge wires and have more freedom to build how you want. Um, I've been really lucky. I really have. I know some people are jaded with the DNA 40, but me, I have been nothing but lucky with this stuff. Um, freaking six Devere mods, not one chip issue, not one weak battery message, um, it's just been rock solid for me. So I know if you guys get um, one that gives you chip issues, it's going to be, you know, a headache and you're not going to trust it. But uh, anyway, thanks for tuning in. That's just my thoughts. Doesn't mean it's fact, but that's how I see it, guys. I prefer the Evolve DNA 40. Thanks for watching, guys.